Steven Donziger is uh, quite an interesting guy. He stood up to Chevron and sued them for their destruction of, I believe it was Ecuador. And um, he won. He won. Uh, Chevron owes the people of Ecuador billions of dollars for just how much they ruined it. And um, in response to that, Chevron ruined his life and persecuted him and prosecuted him. And uh, his story is a terrifying precedent because it shows that if you cross corporations and defeat them, they can uh, effectively destroy you. And that's what they did. So there was sentencing for a contempt of court case that he got related to what happened with Chevron. And he got the longest sentence possible, even after spending over two years on house arrest. He was, he was given six months in a federal prison. So I want to take a moment here and show you. He went on uh, breaking points with Crystal and Sager. And this was the day before sentencing. He's going to tell his story. Watch, and then we'll discuss it. What you're expecting to happen tomorrow. Sure. Well, today is my 786th day in home detention with an ankle bracelet. I live in a two-bedroom apartment in Manhattan, and I... I I helped um, one of the lawyers who helped indigenous peoples in Ecuador win a $9.5 billion judgment against Chevron. Um, the company has launched a massive retaliation campaign against me, which included a, a demand that I turn over my computer and cell phone to Chevron, which is unheard of, um, and turn over my entire confidential case file. I appealed the order, and while it was on appeal, a, a U.S. judge locked me up, claiming I was in contempt of court. It's now been over two years. Um, I was tried in a misdemeanor case without a jury while I was on home detention. Um, the judge, uh, who's a member of the Federalist Society with Chevron Funds, uh, found me guilty of misdemeanor contempt of court. I contest that. I don't think I'm guilty in the least. Um, but she's going to sentence me tomorrow uh, here in federal court in Manhattan, and she can put me into prison for up to six months. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, we're asking for her to release me with time served because the longest sentence uh, of any given any lawyer in U.S. history um, in New York since the federal court was founded in 1789 is 90 days of home confinement. And I've been here now, as I said, 787 days. So, you know, we're hoping she'll do the right thing. We're going in in good faith and we're going to ask her to release me. So 787 days in your house and now you're facing up to six months in a federal prison all for a contempt of court charge. And here's the thing I don't really understand, Stephen. You haven't faced a mm -hmm. jury at any time in this. Like, no, at no point have the facts of your case been actually presented to people. How does this happen? How does this work? Well, I think there's a lot of things uh, happening to me that normally would not happen and should not happen according to our laws and our Constitution. Um, among them, I, I believe I do have a right to a jury. I mean, I, I, I was first sued by Chevron for fraud in an underlying racketeering case, civil racketeering case, after the U.S. attorney rejected it, refused to prosecute me. It was based on false evidence from a paid Chevron witness that I supposedly bribed the judge in Ecuador. There was no evidence that that happened. The witness later did it lying. But the judge, Lewis Kaplan, who's a former tobacco industry lawyer, you know, convicted me without a jury in a civil case of, of trying to defraud Chevron. Um, he then imposed millions of dollars of fines on me, basically bankrupted me. Chevron cleaned out my bank accounts. I'm dependent on my wife and my defense fund to survive at this point. Um, and he then appointed this other judge, a friend of his, Preska, who's a member of the Federalist Society, to try my criminal contempt case. And she locked me up pre-trial. No, that's never happened to a person in U.S. history on a federal misdemeanor charge, someone with no criminal record like me. There's a lot of irregular things, and she got around the jury requirement, which, as you know, is required in a criminal case in the United States, by saying she would not sentence me to more than six months in prison, which makes it a, a Class B misdemeanor, which literally is the most minor possible offense in the federal criminal code. Um, so she avoided a jury, uh, you know, and I think that's not right, given that I'm facing prison. Um, but, they, they, you know, Chevron kind of tricked up the system here. And the other notable feature 
that is just shocking to me is Judge Kaplan, when he charged him with criminal contempt, his charges were rejected by the SDNY, by the U.S. Attorney here in Manhattan. He then appointed a private law firm to prosecute me, Seward and Kissel. And it turns out this law firm has Chevron as a client. So essentially, I'm being prosecuted by Chevron. You know, and this is scary. I just want to, you know, this is bigger than me because this is basically the first corporate prosecution in U.S. history, and people need to pay attention because I think this is the playbook for the fossil fuel industry to go after lawyers and activists who are successful in their advocacy and holding these big polluters accountable. That last point is the most important point, and it actually does, it's not just about the fossil fuel industry, it's about any industry. What we have here is effectively private mercenary prosecutors who ruined this man's life two years with an ankle bracelet on, couldn't leave his house on house arrest, all because he effectively beat Chevron. Beat Chevron and showed uh, their disgusting, disturbing, polluting practices. So we have corporate prosecutions now in the United States of America, and uh, he's spending six months, the maximum sentence in prison. Uh, for him not to get time served is beyond absurd. They are making an example out of him. Don't stand up to the fossil fuel companies. Don't stand up to corporate America. We run this place. You think it's the government in charge. It's not. It's really corporations because corporations control the government. And the thing that I couldn't get over, and again, he was on Crystal Kyle and Friends not too long ago and we had this conversation with him. The thing I couldn't get over is you get, you know, you can be forgiven for thinking well, you have the executive branch and you have the legislative branch and they're more subject to big money and corruption because they need to run for re-election. But at least when it comes to certain judges, you thought, well, there's a degree of independence there that allows them to just flat out go by the book and, you know, enforce the laws and bring about justice. And perhaps they're not as swayed by big money interests. But in the case of Stephen Donziger, it's not even close. The connections between, you know, the people who locked him up and Chevron are astounding. I don't know how this is allowed. But now the precedent has been set. And understand something. The Biden administration could kill this all right now if they wanted to. Right now. All Merrick Garland has to do is take on the case and then drop all the charges. And that's it. Or they could pardon him or commute him or whatever. They haven't done it. They haven't done it. And that's astounding because, listen... Don't get it twisted. Democrats are super corrupt. But one industry that Democrats don't take a lot of money from, except, uh, you know, Joe Manchin is the exception on this and maybe a handful of others in the House. But generally, uh, big oil in the fossil fuel industry, they only give to Republicans. It overwhelmingly goes to Republicans. In the same way that, like, you know, lawyers mostly give to Democrats. Or, like, teachers unions mostly give to Democrats. So... This isn't even an instance where you could say, oh, they're just, you know, the Democrats are just corrupt. No, it's just they're not doing the right thing, and I don't know why they're not doing the right thing. I don't know why Biden wouldn't just, you know, clear this all up immediately. You want to allow Chevron to directly lock somebody up and ruin somebody's life because they did a good job. They did their job effectively. No, this is inexcusable. Totally unacceptable. The guy's a hero. The guy should be let go. I mean, this is, you know, right up there you're talking about um, Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, Daniel Hale level stuff here that a, a, a true hero is being persecuted under the boot of a corporatocracy. And uh, guess what, guys? You know it, I know it. There's not going to be much coverage of this in mainstream media at all. Print outlets did a decent job because print outlets often do a good job, but... You know the way it works, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, the Nightly News. If they bring it up at all, it would just be a passing mention. And that is a damning indictment of them. Because in a world that made sense with a media that was doing its job as a watchdog of power, this would have been scandalous. This would have been leading. You know, it would have been huge. But no. It's only uh, asshole YouTubers like myself who are talking about it. You have to stop and think, how are the history books going to judge stuff like this? Judge this era. How are the history books going to look at Chelsea Manning or Julian Assange or Edward Snowden or Stephen Donzinger or Daniel Hale? Um, and it's really not difficult when you think about that. There are, of course they're going to say, oh, they're heroes. 
But as the injustice is going on, everybody's sleepwalking and barely paying attention to it. Credit to Jordan Chariton, by the way, who was there. There was an event uh, before the sentencing. And um, credit to everybody who showed up and actually cares about trying to make the world a better place. This is a tragedy. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.